much for the introduction and for, and for the invitation. So it's, like, uh, it's a great honor to, uh, to be able to uh, um, present uh, one of my interesting work and on the, on the emulator. And so I've been to a lot of many different research, but this is the one that I, I, I have my heart on and probably gonna do this for the next 20 years, hopefully <laughs> before I retire. So, <laughs> but that, so I'm gonna talk about the, uh, this project and uh, initially it was actually it started as an education project, but now it's actually start to, to take off. So I will talk about the motivation, why I do this, uh, the, uh, the design idea and the, some of the details here. So initially this project was actually started as uh, the extension to my uh, seed lab, uh, what, uh, this lab. So I've been developing the seed lab and for the last 20 years, and now they're being used for uh, by, by more than a thousand universities. And uh, one of the lab I always want to develop and it's the, uh, the related to the BGP attacks. So that is a, one of uh, the, uh, the things I don't have in my lab, but I teach BGP attacks and how BGP works and how the attack works. But that was only one in my lecture without hands-on lab. Everything else I could, I could cover from here. Yeah, so every year I have to make apology to student because that's the only thing I don't have hands-on. I, I tell the student my class is hands-on based, and, but I do have something uh, that cannot have the hands-on. And so I tell them next year, I'm gonna build one. I promise next year I couldn't, I apologize again. And this lasts for seven, eight years uh, until I, I met a student in my class. And so he was very good. And it's not that I was lazy. I mean, it's, it's just, I don't know how to build this one. I, the, to do the BGP attack, you need an uh, internet. <laughs> Uh, and now you cannot launch a BGP attack on the real internet. That's going to get you in, into trouble. Not only that, you don't have resources to do that. It's not that you can launch BGP attack from your home, but you need to own a real BGP router. And so it's not something that you can just easily do it from your garage. Yeah, so, and so I want to build an emulator, but I just don't have a skill to do that until the student and undergrad student in my class, he who has been playing with BGP from high school, and who really owns one and who spend $6,000 per year to own one. So it's not free, you have, to, you have to rent a space in the data center. You have to subscribe to all these surveys to really operate a real BGP router. And this is the student that I had. And so, and he basically had all, this, all the skills and then we decide, okay, I convinced him and I mean, he didn't need money, but I convinced him to work for me so we can build uh, this emulator. And that's how we get the project started. And from basically from 2018, we've been uh, uh, looking at the design. It's not something that you can just say, oh, we want to build the internet emulator, let's implement this. It really takes a lot of design thinking. How do we build this correctly? And so we actually took actually, two years looking at the different design for some of design, we had to implement the prototype. And then once we finished the prototype and we said, no, we don't like this. This design doesn't, it doesn't even pass me. And I'm the potential user, right? This is this for education use. I'm the first user. If I don't like this, uh, let's look at something else. Yeah, so it took two years to eventually come up with design that we both certified. And then we started implement. And his implementation is very good. I mean, only take a few months, seven months and the implementation is done. And we released that in, in the 2021, July. And now we have been building on top of that. So the end of this month, we're gonna probably release the 2.0. The, the significant change of 2.0 is the Ethereum, the blockchain, the component part. Yeah, so that is what we've been uh, improving for the last year. And the initially it was actually for education use and, uh, and only for that particular use. I just want to build a BGP lab, that's it. And so, but it turns out once we finished this and we found out that oh, this is not just for that lab. And we actually come up with the idea to build many different labs. And so we actually did, we actually, at least now we have a few labs already. And, but once we released that, we also find out a research group are starting to use them. And that was kind of unexpected. And so people say, oh, I'm working on this uh, cybersecurity or I'm working on network field and I find your emulator actually useful so I can do the, my experiment. And inside your emulator, instead of actually doing this on the real one, and this is much easier to set up and this has everything I want. So actually, so that actually motivated me to submit a research paper 
And because I, I, I didn't think this research is more for development for research use. And so, and we submit to a hotnet and I, I had a concern that they will not accept the paper because it's not a research paper. And the older review actually echoed my concern, but they eventually said, no, we'd like to have your paper. So, because your paper is not, even though it's not research, but the research will be able to benefit from that. So that's how we get accepted. And in the conference, I was talking to many researchers and one of them is from the ET ETS Zurich and the professor Adrian Perrick was working on the, uh, the Scion project. So I said, yeah, if, if, you, if you run your Scion on, inside of my emulator, and that could be interesting. And he actually bought that. And when he went back and, the, and their team was actually uh, developing this uh, Scion component and for the emulator and still a work in progress. But that is actually a really issues the how the researchers and the like and the, the emulator and they're actually building. We have people from IoT, from Temple University, and they actually connect the emulator to the IoT device and then they conduct experiment inside the emulator. So they can actually do some security related uh, the research on that. And then we're trying to work with some other university on the blockchain. And so that's a lot of collaboration going on. And so this is a very open-ended, it's open source. So if anybody come uh, propose a new idea and we say, oh, this is great. And uh, we probably will uh, find a way to collaborate, work together and to add that to the open source. Yeah, so that's uh, that's the good things about that. The 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 basic uh, the 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 setup is we initially we work on the internet emulator part. So this is the internet and this is the base. So by doing that, we can run our internet. Everything is a container base. And we know that you see actually, and they are containers or they are virtual network and created by the Docker. And so we can our job is to make it easy for user to compose our internet. And then hand this, this composition and to the Docker to run, okay? So the Docker is running everything for you, but you are actually gonna construct them. And uh, this is the base layer. On top of base layer, we actually implement a lot of component. And because the internet, this base, if you don't have this interesting service, these are the service. And then this is probably not very interesting. So we have to build a web, DHCP, VPN. Those are very simple components that didn't take much time. But then we have this larger one like DNS infrastructure. I can run the entire DNS inside here, starting from the root node, from the .com, from .net, and you can, you can pretty much recreate the entire DNS infrastructure running entirely in here. And you have control on all of them. So if you want to conduct experiment or learning and regarding the DNS infrastructure, and this is really a very good platform because you want everything. Right. So, and then we also develop the other like a botnet component, docnet. So if you if you want to gain experience and working on that, I and mean, you can use the real world one, but this one you have your own, and you have a full control of everything. You can customize the way you want. Okay. So we have a build them. They, those each of them are not very complicated compared to Ethereum. <laughs> and then when we decided to put the Ethereum on that, they so we said, oh, this is great. They're just one of the component. It started that way. But actually, the last year, many of you probably know that Ethereum went through this big merge, right? They actually now, they, they abandoned the proof of work and now they introduced the proof of stake. And now every, everything is running on the proof of stake consensus protocol. And that big merge took years to actually to do, right? And you, from that one, you will see how complicated that is. Right? It's very simple. It's, it's not going to take the Ethereum uh, multiple years for the preparation to do that. Because of that, and we realize and duplicate that inside emulator is also very complicated. Yeah, just simply because of nature, they introduce a different chain now. Instead of just one, the execution chain, now they have consensus chain. And this merge basically merges the two chains together. That's why it's called a merge. Yeah, but the whole thing is complicated. If you want to create your own private blockchain yourself, and good luck, and that could take weeks or months, or I don't know, even maybe longer. With the with the our work, it takes you a few minutes and you can recreate that. And so that is really just to make it easy for the educator, student, or for the researcher and to create an environment and without worry too much about I mean spending weeks on, on, on that. So that that's what we are trying to achieve. So I just want to uh, the, the talk about some of the design decision that we make, and that probably can help you understand better how this uh, the emulator can be used. 
And so it, remember, it took us two years and to design this. And some of design decision now, if you look back and you would actually consider this is, yeah, this is obvious. Yeah, but that's, that's just the nature of research, right? And you want to find the solution, you look back, you say, oh, this is trivial. Why didn't I think about this two years ago, right? But that's, that's just the nature of the research. The finding of why is hard. When you look back, it's easy. So yeah. Now, the, what is a good internet emulator? I actually talked to many researchers. I'm trying to convince them and to give this a try, our emulator try. This is the first question they asked me. And they said, okay, I've been working on this particular uh, the network is emulated or simulated for years or decades. I give you five minutes to convince me why should I switch to yours, right? I talked to a lot of the big people and from the field and just trying to introduce them to me. I mean, this is very, um, very uh, the, uh, the nature question. And initially I didn't have a lot of good, good homework. I didn't do a lot of good homework and I didn't, I kind of failed answering their question. But now I think I, I could do better. And this slide pretty much summarize what I would answer if they ask me again. Okay, yeah. So the a good internet emulator first need to be a good in network emulator. Okay, so and in the real world and in the research, if you are informed net, uh, networks research and you probably use some of them, and the three mini net, those are the very common one used by the academia. And those are some of them are used by industry. So they are very good at emulating or simulating the inter the, the network, not the internet, the network, the functionality of network. The yeah, but that's the that is a essential part. It got to be a good network emulation, but that's not enough if you want to emulate the internet. Okay, internet is not just a bunch of the network connect. I mean, underlying this, they are the network and the nodes, right? That's all the building blocks. But you also have this uh, infrastructure. And it has to be emulated, right? You have an autonomous system, your BGB router, right? Yes, you can add the BGB routers here. Configuring the BGB router, that taking me a lot of time because I didn't know how to configure them. I have never owned one, right? Until I met this gift student who could have helped me to do that, right? Now think about, I mean, the average student or average pe people, how do they configure the BGB router without the real world experience, right? So that is, that is something that if you have that, I mean, you can do that, but if you have that, then you, you can help average people to just to use BGP, right? Internet exchange, peering. All of these are, are, the, are really the core of the internet. Without them, and the internet is not going to function, right? So this, if you look at this one, yeah, you will see some of the existing work here like this, and uh, like the mini internet. Those are some of the existing work which actually did that. And so you can see now the scope is now... A, the list is shorter now. Now, if you add one more, so not so those are the infrastructure. But if you say I want to run the service, internet service, internet itself is I mean it's very interesting. But if you are not running an interesting application, right, and then that internet part is not very useful. So if you look at this like DNS, all these things that we we could do, and now if you look at again, and there's nothing else out there. Okay, so all of them. Yes, they can run Ethereum. I mean, if you use Ethereum as a test and you will find out, yes, all of them can do that. And for if you start from here, it's gonna take you, I don't know, a year to do that. From here, maybe it take you a few months here. If you do from here, take you a few minutes. Okay, so that is a big difference. So if this is, if, if in your research and this is the something that you are working on, yes, you're probably gonna benefit a lot from here. But if your research is purely on the network side, and yeah, you don't need to, I mean, uh, maybe they do even better job than us. Yeah, so the, because they are really narrow down folks on the network and the low level part, and that is probably see, good for you. So, but if you if you are running some other things and uh, this is the, the benefit. Now, one of the design decision that we made, it really actually separate us from the existing work is really, uh, we clearly identify the, the two important stage of emulation. So when you build emulation, so they're actually the building part. So helping to build, compose, right? You want five nodes. How are these five nodes connected? Right? How many networks do you need? How many autonomous systems? Right? How, what kind of a DNS record you want to set up? Right? All of this are, are called, we call composition. You're building this. Well, once you build this one, and typically the, the emulation or simulation, what they do is they're gonna spit this into an engine. 
and then the engine will conduct the emulation. Okay, and this is actually harder part, much harder than this part. Most of existing work actually focus a lot on here, right? If you look at the mini net and those are the NO3, they are actually building the engine part. Now, when we start to look at this, there's already a very good engine out there, and that's called a Docker. Okay, many of the existing work they actually predated Docker. And if you look at how they implement, they, they, a lot of the idea is the method they are implementing exactly what the Docker is pretty, used, pretty much using. And I see some of the existing work, they are now switching from their engine to the Docker engine. Yeah, so it's just, I mean, Docker, I mean, you, can, you cannot compare with Docker engine, right? And they have a million, million dollars invested and from the industry. So what we did, we said, let's just use a Docker. And so the hard, harder part is done and people have done our job, we just do this, this job. Okay, and so that makes our life much easier and also make it actually pretty much doable within a few months and after you, you have a good design. So that's pretty much what we have been doing. So we want to use Docker for emulation and we're gonna actually decompose this. Now the composition's job is to construct the Docker file. Okay, now these are doc, many Docker files. I'm not talking about just one or few, each node and if you look at it, maybe next slide you will see. Okay, so let me jump to one of the slides. Yeah, so each of this, you can see that we are actually compared to each of this, each, each of this folder is one of the actually the Docker containers image. Inside this one, you will see there's seven files. So if you have a hundred nodes, that's very common. And this one, I think I have a 60 or 70 some, and we'll talk about 700 files that you have to configure. And they are in, many of them are similar, but they are slightly different. If you change one file here, you're probably gonna have to change 200 different files from other places, right? So that is not just I mean, something you can do manually. If you do that for uh, five, six nodes, that's okay. That's why they, in a lot of uh, research and when they use existing emulator, they, their scale is much smaller. Right? They are using a few, and then you can do it manually. But with this scale, it just you cannot do it manually. And so we actually are the, in terms of composition, we also went through a different design ideas. Some of the existing work using the graphic tool, and you can draw, drag and drop, very nice for the for the for the student who don't know much about the programming. Right, those those are very a good approach. And you have a configuration file. You specify what you want. And then the, you have a program approach, which is the one we are taking. So you basically write the libraries and you, you let the user to use your library to construct. The configuration file basically is also for non-programmer. They just specify what they want. And then you write the program to pass that into the emulation, okay? Now program basically says, I just let you write the program. I provide the API, right? It's more, I mean, it requires programming skill, but we look at that, we said, if you are building the internet emulator and you cannot write, some, write Python code, that doesn't fit, right? So that's not that uh, uh, people who uh, build the internet emulator without knowing how to write a simple program, that's just not a good assumption. So we actually decide using the programming because programming, all of them is about to pick a language. And the really choice, what language do you pick? Graphic language, uh, JSON language, right? The, or, or YAML language, what do you pick? Right, nothing beat actually totally complete program language in terms of expression power, right? And just a loop is an example. How do you create 100 nodes with similar configuration using graphic? It's gonna be hard, right? How do you do that for configuration? Copy and paste 200 times, right? That's the only thing you do, right? Because those, five, those programs, they don't have variable, they don't have a loop, right? So that limit what it really you can do in terms of expression power. Yes, you can do the same job, it's just program language. And if I change 50 from 100, I change one argument, that's it. You're gonna copy and paste 50 more times, right? So that is what we actually eventually come down to, to build a library. We, we, we stick to the Python, we build the Python class, and then your, your job is to use the, our class and use the API. We have created all these, uh, the, uh, the classes for all the essential elements of the internet. Right, you want the internet exchange, we have one, right? BGB router, we have, and we have all of this. Those are essential building blocks. The user just need to use this building block and then put them together 
and also use the actually the, the API to do the customizations. Once they are done, we actually implement a, a compiler for the Docker to con to con the, con the, the translate all of this into the, the Docker file. Okay, so the building part is independent from Docker. And if you look at the, the code, there's none of this mentioned Docker at all. So if tomorrow some other the, the tool becomes more interesting, you just write a different compiler for that and everything else just stay the same. So we clearly separate these two. Building the emulation is generic and the, this underlying this is just for, uh, for, the, for, for the compiler to build. Okay, and if you want to do the one for the cloud, we have not built this yet because this is this is quite complicated for the cloud. Yeah, but we actually are planning to do something like that. And so that's just for the, uh, yeah, so this one we have done this and just give you a simple example. This example, I'm I'm building uh, the, the transit AS, transit AS is more like ISP. They actually change, they take the traffic from one internet change typically in one city and uh, they route them through and to a different city, okay? And that's what the transit AS is. So this is different from the autonomous system that the university are usually. Universities autonomous system, they are usually stop. They just connect to one internet change here and they, this, they, they rely on the transit and to take their traffic to the other places, okay? So they do not actually do the transit, provide the transit service. So, and so this example you can see here, just implement that we inside this we we just in, implement some of the simple internal things all of the stars they are they are the, they are the internet change and they are typically in the real world they are in different cities okay and usually in big cities here and then the router that connect to this internet change they are typically the bgb routers and so other autonomous system and they're going to actually connect to the same the internet change and they will do the peering and that's where they exchange traffic Okay, and that's how the internet, the traffic can come from one autonomous system to another autonomous system and eventually and to the destination. Okay, and that's basically the BGP and it's called the glue of the internet. Okay, so it's not a, the cable, of course, it's, an, it's a hardware glue, but the BGP is a software glue. Without the BGP, if you look, even if your hardware is connected, the internet is not gonna function. Okay, so here we just actually implement, you can see we just create the routers routers create a network and then attach the routers to the different network. And by doing that, you can create arbitrary topology one. So if you want to have a many very complicated things, internet network inside, that's fine. And all you need to do is to create a router because the router is the one that connect the networks. If you connect to the, diff, uh, the internet change like this two, IX1000, 100, IX102, these are the, the, the internet chain and automatically we're gonna configure this router as a BGP router. So for you, it's just one line here, but underlying this configuration, that is very, very complicated. Okay, so that's why the, we, we do all the dirty work here behind the scene, right? For you, it's very, it's very intuitive API for to you. And this only part of that, the actually, the, the, this is the peering part. That is to lay the cable. And this is really the, the peering part. So here you can see I have this multiple autonomous system. They, are, they appear in the San Jose and that's just the city name. We just make up one city name for, for this internet chain. And they'll do the peering. This peering part is if you do that manually and you're gonna understand how the BGP work, the configuration. We are using a real uh, BGP software. It's called the Bird. If you, if, you, if you have experience before, that is open source and widely used in the, in the real world and configuring that the bird, and it's not an easy job. It took me a, actually quite a long time just to learn that myself. My student knows that, but I'm just learning from the student and how that whole thing works. But for user, you don't need to learn that. If, you, if you're not interested in learning that, you just use the API. You just say, I want to peer 152 and 153. These are the two autonomous systems with autonomous system three, which is this, uh, the, 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 this one, the, the, the green one, and uh, at 101. Okay, and you just one line and just specify these other peering. Basically, both of them will, will peer with them. And the peering relationship is not just, I mean, just one relationship. In the real world, you have a different kind of relationship. Some relationship is provider and customer. Some relationship and they are just a peer. 
And depending on the type of that in the real world, they decide whether you pay or not to pay. So a lot of uh, real issues are involved in those relationships. So inside of here, we are trying to emulate those relationships. Of course, it doesn't involve money, but in here, and this basically says we are three is the provider. I am the provider to you. Uh, in the real world, you will pay me. Okay, so the, I'm providing a service to you. And uh, in this one, it's a peer. So 152 and 153, they said, yes, we are connected together. Why, why don't we just peer? So our traffic will directly go to each other instead of going to another place and route it back to us, right? So you can do that. And uh, in that case, and you are pretty much a peer, you are equal, your yeah. size are similar, and then you don't pay each other. That's just for mutual benefit. Okay, so that's a lot of this real world, the, the, the scenario, and we're trying to build into the emulation. And so now they actually, the user can actually they use them either for their learning or for their experiment. And you can also the, do a lot of customization. So in this case, I'm actually customize the node. And all of this came from actually the researcher. They said, oh, I, 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 want, to, I want to install some particular software inside a one of node, okay? And some of research said, I want to uh, run my modified Ethereum software inside one of node. But the other one has to be the real one, but this is a modified one, it's a malicious one, because this, is a, this user is actually conduct experiment, attack experiment. So they want to run the modified the, the Ethereum software, and that's fine to us. We, we provide the API for them. You can import a file, add software, all of this. We allow you to import or, or, or you put the, whatever you want into that container and you just need to use the API, we will do that for you. So that actually make that much easier for the customizations. And my student also implement a very nice visualization tool, which is very nice. And uh, I'm just gonna demonstrate that to you. Okay, so. Yeah, so, so basically on the, on the, on the back end, there was, uh, you can see I'm actually already running this. The container are, are running and you're gonna see they're gonna print a lot of log message. You can just ignore them. Some of them warning, sometimes they will see errors. So, but they're just a, a log information, but the emulator is running very well. I am, I'm running Ethereum on that. You will see some of the, the blockchain related uh, this, uh, the message here. But right now I'm just gonna demonstrate the internet part and you can see here, yeah, so they are just running each of them. Each of this one is just a container. And in, inside there, just, we just visualize them and uh, so you can see their relationship. And you can actually really just interact with them. So it's not just, I mean, a pretty picture. So you can, let me see, I'm just gonna interact with them. I'm gonna go to here. From here, you're gonna see the, uh, the, some of the menu and you can launch a console and that will, so I'm already here already running so I can get a terminal and you can do that from, from your digital terminal using the Docker command. This just make it easy for you. So you get terminal on that machine actually. And now you can, you can, run, the, you can run the command. So this is just a basic Linux machine, right? The container and you can just run, I'm just run the pin. And you will see here, I'm, I'm running this pin. I'm pinning this destination. And I actually, we actually the, uh, the installed the, the TCP dump on all of this node. When they capture, you can see I put the ACMP in the filter. And what they do is when they see the ICMP packet, they can report to this, this application and we're, we're gonna visualize them. So these are the real traffic going on on, the, on our emulator internet and we just visualize them. Yeah, you, you see they are complicated and that just means that they are, the forward path and return path are, are different. And so you, one of them is forward pass, one is return pass. That's why it's complicated. And if you want to say, I, I'm, this is too fast because in, the, in our emulator, we did not delay there. It's just, everything's very fast. If you want to say, I want to look at that more closely, we did implement this feature replay and, and replay and uh, record and replay. So let me just re re record them. So I'm just going to record them a few seconds and I'm going to stop. And then you can see the replay and this turned that into decrease time instead of the real time. Now you see the order, right? You can see the forward pass is here. Now return, they go to a different route. That's just the nature of the BGP. This happened to be like that. 
most of the traffic, they're probably going to be symmetric, but this happened to be like that. And that's just not the way how the BGP work. We do not control that. Everything is, is set up by your own the composition. And when they do the peer, it turns out that return pass is, is faster that, that way. And for some reason, that's BGP decide that. So if I, if I, if I here, say here, if I, if I disconnect, you can see from this BGB router, I'm on this BGB router. And from here, you can see it appears with a lot of other places. So it's appear with the, uh, this different autonomous system. If I disable one of them, uh, I, I want the, yeah, let me disable one of them. So if I disable the BGP uh, with 154, you can see now that pass becomes not, not a viable path anymore because I, I disable the peering between these two BGB router. Now we're not peer. I'm not carrying your traffic anymore. And, but you, you're happy that you have another route, right? Because that's how the forward comes. So you go back to your forward path. Yeah, no, this is no longer available to you. And that's also what happens in the real world. If you do not pay and you, your payment ex exceeds for a few more days, we cut your link, <laughs> you lose the connection. But most of the organization, like in our university, we peer with three different company and we use one as a primary. If something goes wrong in that one, the traffic will automatically go to the backup. And that's because of BGP. That just work automatically without even you controlling them. Yeah, most organizations, they do that. So instead of have a single, single point of failure, or if you have a the disagreements with your 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 provider and you you can always yeah let me enable that that should the traffic we should be covered yeah so so that's actually very uh basically very this is nice this tool is very nice and the the the, the funny story behind this I told my student I like this tool and I, I the I but I don't want to distract you and because it's going to take a while I think it's going to take many many months to build this. And my student is so good. And he said, okay, that's fine. Two months later, he said, it's done. I said, what's done? He said, this is done. So <laughs> I said, totally, totally unexpected, but he did a very good job. And I just, I mean, we, I, I, I thought it's gonna take him a lot of time, but he's a very good programmer. I just do it just uh, very fast, but that's a very nice tool. And I think this is uh, very, very, very interesting thing to show. So above that, we actually did a lot of other things and also based on the based on the research need. And this is one of the things uh, people said, I, I, yes, you can run emulate on one single machine, right? But my experiment requires a lot of a node. On my node, you can see I, I run the 70 node without any problem. I use eight GB of RAM to core for my VM. I want everything inside my VM, not on my real machine, but the virtual machine. Yeah, so that is a very low configuration, right? AGB to cool core. Where is, uh, but you can run some number, but for education, it's pretty much necessary. I mean, it's sufficient, but for research, it may not. So we actually come up with a different way. If I, if I have an emulator one, so for example, I build emulation here, and this, the, for example, this will emulate uh, the internet within the US. Right, and some, and you can actually build it like China if you can build an emulation of China in a different emulator, right? And you said, I want to connect them. And we eventually found a very nice solution. And you just uh, really uh, cr uh, use a common internet exchange here, use a common internet exchange here. They have to be common. And then right now they're separate. And all we need to do is to uh, stick out uh, uh, basically uh, the network interface card, stick out one from here. These are two different computers. And then you, you, you add a bridge, bridge them. These two network, now they bridge. And once they bridge this, they form the single virtual network, a single LAN. And now with that one, and you can just easily, once they form the single LAN, to those BGB router, they don't see that they are from different computer now. They are thinking they are, we, we are on the same LAN, and that means we can peer. If I start to peer with you, and I will announce that I know the, the network destination from this side. You are gonna tell me that you know the network destination from this side. After we exchange, I know the route from here and to China. And you know the route from China and to the US. When the traffic come to here, they will exchange. Okay, so it's create a very natural solution. That's actually how exactly the real world actually works. But instead of having a shared internet exchange, this internet exchange will be in a different city now. 
and they just laid the cable, right? If this is in the US, now the China has to lay the cable through the Pacific Ocean, eventually reach that city and where you do the exchange. Yeah, so that's pretty much emulate how the real world works. So when, whenever we come up with a solution, we find the solution is, is clean, it's neat, and we, we, we will soon realize that's exactly how the real world works. So if you stick to that principle to emulate what the real world works, your solution probably is going to be very clean and very neat. Yeah, so that's a, that's, that's a few of the lessons we learned. And this is another example. And we want to be able to not only just do the emulation within here, we want also to be able to reach out a real network. Initially, it's isolated, and you can do everything from here, but a lot of surveys are on the real internet. Some of existing work, they're gonna duplicate some of them here. I mean, good luck with them. That's gonna be very hard to duplicate everything. So what we said, yeah, we can actually poke a hole from our emulator, we call the exit point, and we can go out. Of course, you should not attack them. Uh, you should, when you do the attack, attack something here, okay? But they, they could be, that could be actually the, 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 I will show you one example I did to my university, and I am launching attack on my university, but I was not in trouble. So how do I do that? I will show you the example. And this will create a very nice, the actually the, 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 the basic the setup for you. So you can do that, they can reach the real world. And the way how to do that is also just one line here. And basically we are taking advantage of how the BGP works. Basically this, this node, this big black node basically is a BGP router. But this BGP router announced it owns everything in IPv4 address space. So if you cannot find the destination for any IP address, eventually you're gonna find from here, right? Because I, I, I own everything, but I, my prefix is just one bit that will take a lower the priority than the other one. If you're already in here, your matching will be longer than one and you will be the destination. But if you cannot find the one, you will find a match for my prefix, yes. How do you resolve the IP address? Say in your emulator, you have multiple ISPs and they are having their own uh, IP address spaces. Yes. And when you connect to the real internet, Yes. Then you know you are gonna announce that you have these IP addresses. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. If if I let's say for example, if all of right now in our emulator, all the IP addresses we use a private IP address, so ten dot something. But if you do use a real one, it's okay. You just you're gonna hijack them from here. And all the chat, for example, Google eight dot eight dot eight dot eight. If you put a, a a network here with that IP address, and the traffic will come to you. And then they will be pretty much dropped unless you set up DNS server because 8.8.8.8 is a DNS server from Google, right? If you do not have that, they will eventually be routed here. That's just the nature of router and they will go out and they will go to the real, the, the Google's DNS server, the reply will come back. Yeah, so it's really just simple tricks using the BGP, right? Announcing that you own everything in the world, but take the lower priority. If something is already existing in your emulation, they take the higher priority. Right, everything's a default. You can consider this as default the BGP router, which doesn't exist in the real world. In the real, you don't have a default the BGP router. Do you announce, do you announce ads? Like, you know, I have this. Block, yes. I own this you announce this, 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 is, this will be the announcement that this BGP router announced to the entire emulation, not to the outside, because yes. to the outside doesn't make sense. No, you, you won't, because. Just yeah, because to the outside world, this is not a BGP router. This is just my computer. Yeah, they, nobody's gonna actually de detect that announce from me. But for the inside, this node is actually a BGP router, right? Because I'm just running everything from my own laptop, right? Which is definitely not a, the BGP router. Yeah, so this actually create a very nice, uh, this, this setup. And this is the story that I was, I want, yeah, I call this bring your own inter internet to the, to the actually uh, the internet class. So this, this also, also because of another nature, Another feature that is motivated by the research from IoT device. This research want to connect IoT device to the emulation because IoT device, they are physical, are very hard for me to emulate them to put inside here. So what we ask them to, yeah, you can run, you can have your physical one, but if you want to connect them, participate in the emulation, right, for whatever experiment purpose, now we need to solve this problem. How to get you to, to connect in here? Now, eventually we found a very nice solution. So what we did is similar thing. We actually stick out this net interface card, connect to this one uh, bridge and with a Wi-Fi access point. And now you just need to connect to Wi-Fi access point 
and this is actually going to bridge you. So this IoT device will be equivalent to attaching to this network. We have a DHCP on here. So you're going to get IP address. And from that one, you're going to find out that you, you are just one node here. Everybody can reach you and you can reach the rest of the network. You can also, if you want to reach out, I mean, you can, I mean, they happen to be on the same land. I could have a multiple Wi-Fi. You can actually come in from this path and then eventually route to here. So, and then once we implement this, I, I said, oh, this is fun. I could use this in my class. So I took this in my class. And so I asked all the students to disconnect the, the smartphone and from the university at the Wi-Fi access point, connect to mine. And by doing that, I'm providing inner service to them now. Uh, obviously, I'm going out. Eventually, I'm using the university Wi-Fi to go out. But their traffic comes into here, becomes a participation of my emulation. And then I said, I'm going to launch a BGP attack on my university. I'm going to hijack the, my university's uh, IP prefix. As soon as I do that, you're going to lose the connection to our university website. And you will see that. Okay, so everything else still working fine because they're going to go, I, I, I'm not hijacking the other one. So, and because this is a BGP attack, so I launched the BGP attack inside here and immediately they're going to see. And their website is just hanging because all of the traffic come from here. They want to go to the university. Typically they're going to go this route. But because I've hijacked them, now all of the traffic is not come to here and get dropped. I kind of redirect their actually the, the traffic to that particular IP perfect. That's not just the classic BGP attack. I, I will demonstrate that attack. I'm not gonna attack your university though. That's gonna get me in trouble. So, but I let ITS know about this. I said this is not a nothing is actually go out from here. It's only inside the sandbox, right? So the only concern they have is my the strength of my Wi-Fi exploit is too high. They asked me to do that down. I said, that's okay, I can do that down. So it only affects the student in the classroom, not actually inter interfere with the other Wi-Fi, but that's all, their only concern. Yeah, but that's uh, the setup is very simple. Just having uh, the card and the bridge and the Wi-Fi exploit. And then I take this to the class and uh, it was very good experience because the student now not only see the, how the attack was, they also experience with that. And you actually, you don't actually really actually cause any problem outside. And this is really, I mean, isolated, completely isolated. Yeah, so even if I want to launch this on the real world, it doesn't work, right? I'm not the real BGB router. The, the traffic just go out and nobody's gonna take that traffic. So this is complete, uh, the isolated, yeah. On, on top of the internet, we actually build a few, the component, as I mentioned in the beginning, yeah, so you can see here, uh, the our designs, this is also another very uh, the good design. And uh, we want to build this one as a separate module. Like the, we, we have to use that to design for the IC, the, the integrated chips and the motherboard. Right? You can build in, in IC, you can plot in, in any motherboard. They should still work, right? As long as they follow the, same, the, 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 the uh, specification. Right, we want to build that like that. Right? We want to build a DNS blockchain as a separated IC. So that one is not bind to any internet. Okay, so you can plug this in the blockchain into this, the, the internet emulator that you build, or you can plug into this in somebody else build. They should still work. Okay, as long as you connect them. Okay, so this is the design. We want this to be fully, uh, fully uh, portable not just hard coded with the underlying things. So that was one of the design decisions we made. That was actually really paid off. And so, yeah, I will, I will skip those some of the details off. So this is just an example. I want to build the entire DNS infrastructure. And you can see I'm setting up the root server. I'm setting up the .com server, edu server, and I create this uh, NS example server, syr.edu server. I add a few records. This is just very small mini, uh, the DNS infrastructure, you have everything from the root and to the domain server. And you just, you just plug that in into a, a baseline and you connect them, right? As you, you do need to connect the we, node inside of the component are called a virtual node. They're just symbol, they're just a name. And that's why they're portable. And when you deploy them, just connect this name with one of the nodes on the internet layer. And now everything you, every configuration you do for that name will be carried over to this particular container and they're gonna generate all the configuration file for that container. 
tomorrow you want to connect this to this node, that's fine. And then just actually bind this to a different node and the configuration will be actually generated for that container. Yeah, so that is very, very portable. And it's not, not how to code it. And initially the emulator of the, the blockchain is just a one of the component, but actually because of complexity, and we spend a lot of more time on that. And so that one was really just trying to solve the problem for this, uh, for this one. So these days, if you want to uh, work with a blockchain, you have many choices. You could use a built-in simulator. The Remix and the, the Ganesh, they have a lot of simulator. Those are the simulator. Those, that means th those are not the real one. They just simulate the behavior blockchain. If, even if you have a thousand one, they just simulate everything within one process. That's it, that's simulator. It's very good for you to do the testing, but not very good for you to do experiment. They are not the real one. You can do on the test net. I mean, you can do on the real main net that you have to pay. Right? Test net is free, you don't need to pay, but still for cybersecurity, you cannot do launch attack on any of them. Right? So many research group, they're gonna do this. I'm gonna create my own, and so I can do the attack. Yes, you can build three or five nodes here. And with the seed emulator, we're trying to make that process much easier and make it much scalable. Okay, so that is what we actually created. So you have a, you, it's a realistic, everything runs in here. It's basically the real software like the one running in the real world. Okay, you have full control, which means you can change every single node you want. You can, you can lock into every node, change their behavior, whatever your experiment wants, and this control experiment, that's very important, right? You have a, you can customize, you can repeat. If tomorrow, after you write a paper, you said, I, I want to, other people to be able to repeat my experiment. This is gonna be hard, right? You, you let other people to build the same physical setup like you do, right? And they will not do that. Uh, you just give them this 200 lines of Python code, run it, you're gonna create identical setup and just run on, on this, uh, on this uh, OS, you're gonna get the exact same setup. Right, a few minutes, you reduplicate all my test environment, right? Now you can repeat my experiment and you should be able to see the same result, right? That is really good for research, right? To be able to repeat your experiment. And one of the problem is, is the setup. That's the one of the problem people face. Yes, I can, I can run your code, but I have to have all the setup that you have, right? This just make that much easier for you to do that, okay? All my code to build that blockchain fit into slice. So if you want to say, okay, oh, that's how, how difficult it is to build. Yes, I built one with a 10 node, right? If you want to change 10 to 100, on that total equal to 10, change to 100, that's it. And that's all you need to do from 10 to 100, right? And then everything is, is on here. That's pretty much the, all you need. You, you, create, you can see at the beginning, I create a blockchain. You can create a multiple blockchain in the emulator. So here I'm creating one blockchain and the type is POA, proof of authority type. And then you, you can set the gas limit on block that just from some of the customization. And then you can see I'm creating 10 nodes and the sum of the nodes I'm going to create uh, nodes here. Some I'm going to create money. This is a lot of money. So, and you can have a pre-funded account in there. Okay. And now you can bind them to the real network and that, that will work. Yeah, I will show you the, I, I'm already running this one in my emulator here. And so you can see from, I, I have, we also have a, this uh, tool. This is not visualized, but that really to help you to know what is going on on the blockchain. So we have this tool, show all the balance. And right now I don't have traffic, but we, have, we also wrote the tool. So I can just send the random traffic here. So it just, so I'm gonna send a random transaction. So this, this, this tool will basically uh, the generate the traffic and the picking random pick one of, one of sender sending to a random receiver, basically random send the money to each other. And you will see, uh, you, you, you will be able to see the, see the actually the, yeah, so, yeah, you will see that these are the block information. So every, you can see the, now that block 13, 19, now they have a nine transaction inside. And if you want to look into them and you can click 
and the order transaction. So that just makes it easy for you to look at what's in there. And if you're familiar with blockchain, you know this is pretty much like EtherScan, the, the commercial tool that, that many people are using. We just implement some of simplified version of that because those are not open source. We wish they are open source, we can just directly use them here, but they are not. And so you can just easily do that very, yeah, if you are running the POS, you can even look at the, the other chain, the, the consensus the chain and how that works. You can even look at the, every single node. This is what the user scan doesn't have. I can look at all your transaction pool. So how many of them are actually uh, get stuck in the pool right now? So you can see this 16, they are waiting. They are not stuck. Some of the transactions get stuck and, and that help you to debug what is going on. Right? I send a transaction, it did not get added to the block. What happens? You're gonna look at, oh, here, there's a one which is get stuck in there. Right now, we did not have the full detail, but once you click on it, you should be able to see what transaction is in there. Yeah, so that really helped the researcher and to see what is going on. In the real world, you cannot do that because you cannot log into everybody's the, the node to, to see that. I mean, they're probably not gonna tell you the, all of these details. Yeah, so we, we support all of this, POS, POA, POW, and uh, if, from the big merge. And also the, 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 the good thing about this is because our emulator just really just run on the, on the real software, it exposed the exact same, the, the port like the real, the real software is doing. So if you are using the Metamask, Remix, or the existing tool, all you need to do is to change a little bit of configuration and they do, they typically have, because all of them, they do connect to different network. So if you just go there and say, instead of connecting to the real mainnet, connect to our emulator and the MetaMask will do that for you. And then the, all this tool, and you're gonna see that. So it's very natural. And so if, so here in my case, and you can see, I do have MetaMask here and you can see I'm, this, this one picked up the account on my emulator. It shows I have this 9.6, right? With the 16,000, the, uh, the uh, equivalent to the six, Sixteen thousand dollars, right? And the MetaMask do all of this for you, right? So I do just feel to make me myself feel better. I do create an account which has I don't know how much money I have, but this is ten to twenty five US dollar. <laughs> I'm super rich, I'm richer than anybody on the, in the world. So, and you can do that, and it's very simple. Just one line in your emulation, you you can create a pre-funded account. Right, that means those are useful because to do anything you need some money, right? This just for fun, I create a lot of money in there. But that just a, really just demonstrate this tool is really the real world tool is working with your emulator. So I don't need to build every single tool. That is a very very useful to us. Okay. Yeah. So I think that I have done most of the application. So here I just want to mention two, given a, whatever the time. How many time do I have left? Few minutes. minutes, okay. Five minutes, okay, good. I should be able to do that. So this two fun part, BGB attack. So this is really come from real world example. The 2008 Pakistan, because of mistake they made when they configure their BGB router, they turns out hijacked YouTube. And they want to block YouTube and within their country, but the, their configuration was incorrect. And they kind, kind of, they announced everything to the entire world. And now the entire world actually say, oh, you own the YouTube. All the traffic now go to Pakistan, of course, get dropped. And uh, so the YouTube immediately actually detect that because all these major companies, they did, this happened quite often. It's not that, I mean, just happened once in a, in, a, in a million years, right? And they detect that, they actually trying to steal back their IP address. So the whole thing is very interesting. But if you understand how the BGB work and you would like know how these things uh, attack works, and the lab where I designed the lab for this, so students will configure those attackers BGB router so to launch the attack. And all they need to do is so they have to change the BGB setting and now they launch the attack. And then they can also the, do the fight back and basically configure this BGB router. So how do you steal your own network back? Yeah, so now for, for the demo, what I will do is I'm just gonna shoot, I'm just gonna run the code here so here I'm already I'm already connect to here the doing the let me stop the my the this one. So here I'm already have wrote the script. So my script is gonna actually 
launched the attack on the by launching the attack, I am modifying the BGB router of attack attack in somewhere here. So I'm just going to using the Docker command to, to push uh, uh, update the, the content of the configuration to this to this node. And then once this works, and the traffic will be redirected. This is my victim. Yeah, the traffic here. This is pretend to be YouTube. Okay. So once I do that, you will see that tra traffic will be redirected. And you can see, okay, my attack is there, it's up, up there. So you can see all the traffic is actually now actually goes back to there. No, they don't get here. If you, if you look at my, 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 com, my command here, my pin is not giving me any response because there's not, nothing. Okay, so there's no, no, no actual response coming back. That just means, I mean, you are not reaching your destination. And, and to really emulate the fight back, I also have this one. Basically, you just reconfigure that. You're gonna, rec you're gonna steal that back. Now you, the traffic will get steal back, right? And uh, using exactly the same attack strategy, right? So I'm so pretend this one is not me. I'm trying to steal that, right? And you use the exact same technique, and then they will, you will steal that back. You should be able to see that from here. The 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 pin now is working. You can see the the the. The pin is actually now is giving you this. Okay, yeah. So this is one of the fun things here. Uh, it's in the lab. So let me just show you one more, the last one. And this actually is is actually the. So this actually is the of uh, I I record a video because I don't want to run this uh, live demo because this is going to burn up my my computer. What I what I'm doing is here. Let me just pause it here. Uh, we we've been teaching Morris Worm for many years, right? But most of us probably don't know how how. I mean, we understand how the Morris Worm works, but never had experience writing one, right? Even if you write one, I mean, you cannot deploy that. So with this one, you can see I'm running two hundred nodes here, and on here each each autonomous system have twenty. Those are the already have two hundred plus some of this. I think I have 240 or 50 nodes computers in this internet. And now the, the, the lab is to ask students to write a worm, but you can only release the worm from one of the nodes, okay? And now with, when this node compromises computer, this, this worm will attack the other node. Once they attack the other node, you need to make a copy of yourself to crawl to here. And then from there, you're gonna further launch your attack. So this one is attacking, this one attacking, now it's doubles. Now once they are successful, now it's the four times the exponential increase. That's how warm express. Okay, so the job for them, I'm showing only one terminal for one of the nodes, and you will see this, this one succeeded in the attack, but then looking for the target. But before they launch attack, find out where the machine is alive, because they are just put the random scan the IP address. And then find the one, this one found. Okay, now it's launching the attack and you will see the flash. We actually let them to display the, the one, the, we set a filter. So this is actually, once you get a compromise, the, the attackers, the, the worm will just run pin one, two, three, four. The reason why we do that, because now we can catch them from our visualization. So they will flash. Okay, so what, so this actually just very nicely just to visualize the, you can see all these computer, they are just flashing and that means they are compromised. I, I speed this five times. That's why it's faster. Yeah, but typically it's still going to be fast enough. You are going to see my CPU usage. That CPU usage is going to be very high. Eventually I have to pause. Yes, I have typo here, not to turn off. Oh, double O. Yeah, so now, we the most one had a mistake. It did not actually attack its own whether its own already is self infected. Okay, if they do, then it should stop. Otherwise, if you keep infecting yourself, every copy of worm takes resources, and when the entire network is com compromised, then everybody's attacking everybody, right? And it goes up very fast, and now you you lose the resources. 
Yeah, if I don't do that, my VM will freeze. Yeah, so that's why I don't do the demo, and I just uh, show you the show you the video. But it's the videos on the uh, on on the uh, on the YouTube, and you can easily look at what is there. Yeah. Okay, I think I'm done with the, my presentation. So, yeah, question? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they do. They do. Yeah, yeah, Morris, I intentionally preserved that mistake just to force students to the original copy of that. Yeah, it, doing that is just a few lines. Yeah, we did that. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, we basically doing a lot of these things. The, I call this one, I call the project called Yesterday Once More. Uh, basically, I want to recreate all this notorious attack or internet incident uh, happened in the past. I'm trying to recreate them in the emulator. That's why I call it yesterday once more project. So just make it fun, fun. So yeah, but that's pretty much what I've been trying to do. Yeah. Okay.